Thank you so much for joining us. It's time for relationship. And today we're going to be discussing a topic that I personally have been pushing forward because I, I was actually like this, <laughs> the angle around this particular topic just threw me aback. And I had to sort of uh, settle myself to discuss it. Are Gen Z's ready for marriage? Relationship mentor and speaker, Toju Olua Toibo, is back in the building with us. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Good morning. I had to settle myself to think about this. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe for those that don't understand what it is or what it means to be Gen Z, let's talk a bit about the age group involved. Right. So Gen Zs are pretty much the people who we call tech babies. So they're born into technology. So they're they are about 18 to 25. Okay. And they're born into the fast-paced world. Those okay. are Gen Zs. Okay. Yeah. So is there, well, I'm not going to ask about statistics. Um, are they getting married in that age group? Are they actually doing that as much mm. as we mm -mm. did uh, in our time? No, from, I mean, from the work I do, from statistics I've read, yeah. um, from just observing even people around, friends, family, yeah. they're not getting married as early as we did. Okay. Um, even the relationships are not as serious as we took them. Back in the day, I mean, when you... When you're around this age, you're thinking, okay, I want to get married. Yeah. Most of them are dating now to see how it goes. To see and if how it's it goes. not working, we move. And wow. if it's working, yeah. And then even if it works <laughs> on my terms and conditions. So mm. they're not getting married as quickly as we did. And even if they are, their terms of marriage are totally different from what you'd expect them to be. The mindset around getting married... Uh, has a lot to do with responsibilities mm -hmm. and commitment. Mm -hmm. Those are big words. Yes. But they're not usually words we associate with that particular generation, yes. Gen Zs. Why do you think that is? Okay, first of all, let me say this. Just like with everything in life, there are exceptions. So if we're talking um, generically, this applies. But I know there are some Gen Zs that you speak to and you're like, wow, you're, yeah. you're speaking more mature than your age. Okay. But generally, um, I get a lot of this from Gen Z's, especially when it comes to relationships and marriage. And I think it's based on what I said early. They're really growing in a world where everything is fast, okay. where you can have things at the push of a button, where you have options mm -hmm. and alternatives. Okay. If you're not on Netflix, you're on Showmax. Yeah. If you're not on this, you're on online. Yeah. If you're not on this social media platform, you're yeah. on that social media platform. Yeah. And if this one is not working for you, you block the person or you block... It's easy and there are options. Mm. And somehow, I don't know if it's consciously or subconsciously, subconsciously, I guess, mm. it comes into the relationship. Okay. And so it's a case of it, it's working for me. And because, I mean, the economy of skills have balanced out. Okay. Woman is earning, man is earning, I go to work, you go to work. So it's like, what else are you bringing to the table? Okay. So it's, diff it be it's become more difficult to be selfless, more difficult to be patient, more difficult to wait out process because you're used to fast. Mm. And if you don't intentionally calm yourself down and submit to learning, training, teaching, yeah. you're going to make a mess of your relationship and marriage. So uh, now that word submissive, you know, huh. yeah. People, they don't want to hear it. They, they, nobody wants to hear yeah. it these days. <laughs> uh, but the thing I, I'm trying to put into perspective now, because mm. I, I got married at 23. I think. I got married at 24. You got married at 24. Yep. And at that particular age, there were just some things that had been instilled in our brain to prepare us for this. Yes. Do you think that parents of this generation that we're talking about have something to do with this, mm -hmm. uh, this issue of maybe not instilling enough nuggets of information into these young people? Mm -hmm. Let me do a, um, a sidestep and say, I mean, preparing is good. Instilling okay. a lot is good. It doesn't negate challenges in your marriage or in life in general. I mean, okay. you study, but you enter exam hall and you see one question like, oh my God, what mm. is this? Mm. But being prepared helps you withstand the pressures a lot better. Okay. I really feel that um, the stakeholders, parents and friends, but speaking about parents now, yeah. may not really be helping. Okay. They are not Gen Zs themselves. And they will tell their children things like, ah, in my days, this yeah. was how we did it all. Yeah. And it worked for you. So why aren't you telling your child this? I know that things are a bit different. So the way you go about it might be different, but the principle remains the same. Okay. I think parents are more interested in being friends and being liked by okay. their children okay. as opposed to putting their foot down. Mm. Um, because you've sent them to good schools because they are now independent and adults, doesn't mean they're not your child and they don't need sense and you don't need to instill it in them. Okay. So I really do feel like parents are a bit lax. Mm. 
and I mean, because you've lived your own life, 30, 40 years married, yeah, yeah. doesn't mean you should let your child do whatever they want to do because now you've sent them to good schools. Yeah. Because the ripple effect in society is what we're seeing today. Right. There's someone watching right now, a Gen Z watching right now, is a guy, a girl, wondering, you know what, what can they do? Mm -hmm. to be more prepared for mm -hmm. that commitment, for settling down, mm -hmm. for marriage. Age 25, probably they weren't thinking about that. They were thinking about maybe an Ivy League uh, university or you know, saving up for a new device or mm -hmm. something like that. But what can they start doing right now to prepare for settling down? First of all, take your mind off the bad news about marriage because I know that's one of the issues they are going through. They're like, ah, they're also born into a time where couples are breaking up easily. So they're like, is it really worth it? There are more couples working than those that are not. Okay. That's number one. Number two, get counsel from older people. Mm. Um, even if you don't like your parents, because some Gen Z's just think their parents are old school and they don't want to. But there are couples that you like and their marriages are working. Try to talk to them, ask them questions. Read. There are so many um, videos, material online. Um, read and then surround yourselves with people that you think are, are going in the same direction that you are. Okay. Really important. So this issue of circle, I'm going to come back to that. There mm -hmm. was that saying that we used to hear when we mm -hmm. were younger, show me your friends and I'll tell, and I'll you, tell who you who you are. are. Now, it might have been adjusted. It could be friends on Facebook now, and <laughs> people you are following now mm -hmm. on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, but how important is that issue of circle? Because the circle is a lot wider mm -hmm. than it was in our day. I think the saying is still very true now. Okay. Whether it happens gradually or immediately or over time, it's going to rub off on your ideas, your ideologies. And so you realize that even if you take five steps forward, someone is, they say, little, fox, little foxes fall the vine, right? And so somebody's idea and mentality is going to taint your own perception of what you want to do. Okay. And while you should have 100% or 85% of a good relationship or marriage, somebody has come to taint it with, ah, make sure your husband does not talk to you like this too. Make yeah. sure your, you don't allow your wife to talk to you like this. So, and then you take that and add it to the 80% that you have that is good. But it's now tainted, it's now polluted. Okay. Right? So I think that the circle really, really influences how you behave. Okay. So now um, we've, we've talked about the circle now and who you're following and, and uh, online especially. But now what about the, peop the things that we should not be doing um, with this particular generation? What should they not be doing? Uh, but should we not be doing for them or to them? Or? I think it goes both ways mm -hmm. because it feels like there are a few mistakes being made. I yes. mean, this is my opinion. Uh, how, how can we avoid them? Well, I think from the older generation to yeah. them, in as much as I'm off, I'm, because everybody's really sensitive now. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody is don't judge and all. But I think we still need to strike that balance. Um, so while we need to understand that they're not coming from where we're coming from, they don't know the things we know. They're not exposed to the things that we're... Um, a lot of them started being more active in life. COVID hit, so everything is online now. So that one-to-one -one touch. So we need to have that one-to-one -one connection with them. We can't just talk about them online or talk about them on TV. We also need to have touch points with them. Okay. Try to understand them, listen to them, hear them out. Sometimes people make mistakes not because they're foolish. It's mm. just because they really don't know. Mm. So we also need to be intentional about not just talking about them, but talking to them and with them. Okay, so we, we often uh, used to say ignorance isn't an excuse, but in this particular mm -hmm. situation, it actually could be yes. a little bit of an excuse. Ignorance to the fact that not everything you see on social media is yes. real. Um, and uh, this mindset of making money mm -hmm. before you settle down seems to have really infiltrated the mindset of the average Gen Z. Um, now, because of the tech space, young mm -hmm. people are making a lot more money than they ever did mm -hmm. uh, in our day uh, yeah. or generations before now. So this making money before settling down thing, what do you think about it? Money is good. <laughs> Just so with the <laughs> air like is that. clear, money is good, but it's not, the, it's not the only or the primary currency in marriage. Okay. Because... If you talk to even the Gen Z's now or talk about their parents and their parents who have old money and good money, yeah. and I ask them, is your mom happy? Mm. Is your dad still sleeping around? Mm. And they will tell you, yes, mm. and my mom is not happy. I'm like, so do you want to have all the money in the world and not have a man to come home to mm. who can lead you, guide you, love you? Or a woman who has all the money in the world and throws it in your face? 
money is good, but if we can make it work for the relationship, not against the relationship. Okay. And money grows. <laughs> Today mm. is here, tomorrow is gone. But it can grow. And so if you're growing in value, understanding, and support, the money will grow as you both grow. Money is a consequence of what you, the value you provide. Yeah. And so if the value is always there, the money will always come. So no, you don't need to have all the money in the world because yeah. take one naira out of your 10 million, it's no longer 10 million. So <laughs> don't bother now yourself. 9 million, 999, okay, and inflation <laughs> is on the rise. So do you really have money? Are you really that rich? It's so yeah. funny. Um, uh, there was actually a, a couple that, that uh, we, went, we went for their wedding. And I think a week after the wedding, the, the guy lost his job at an oil company, lost all his benefits, lost everything. Mm -hmm. And this was just a week after the wedding. True life. And it was just like, wow. So was she really, was she really prepared for marriage with this person? for richer, for poorer, yeah. or was it you don't only say, for rich? A lot of people have eliminated, eliminated that part from their vows. They don't wow. want to say that. And I mean, we don't pray for bad things to happen, but life happens. Mm. So you really need to ask yourself, why am I getting married? What is the purpose of this marriage? When things look good, will I be there? When things don't look good, will I? there needs to be something else that is weightier and connects you mm. more than the ephemeral and surface things. There just needs to be. Otherwise, you'll be yeah. done in two weeks. Wow. Yes. Two weeks. You will be done in two weeks. No jokes. Goodness me. I honestly, I was going to go into culture, uh, but I think we're, we're, we're a little short on time. The culture, cultural barriers in different uh, parts of the country, of course, different countries of the world, and right. how it affects mindset. But yes. we'll be able to answer those questions probably online. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC. On this post, please put in your comments and your questions. Thank know. you so much. Thank Sergio. you so much. Thank you. All right, there's still so much more to do right here on Wake Up Nigeria. Uh, let's take a quick break and be back with more.